How's it going, folks? Hello, welcome. <laughs> I heard about Zap like so the character who played Zap Rousedower on uh Yeah, what was that what was that what was that movie? Final Justice? Or am I thinking is that one of the Joe Don Baker MST three K movies? The final sacrifice. Final justice versus final sacrifice. That's why that's why it was hard to keep them straight. Okay. Okay, well. Yeah. Let's dedicate this uh, this Wad Wednesday to Zap Roused Hour then and get right into it. Okay, so welcome to Wad Wednesday. We're going to choose a completely random uh, Doom level from the id games archive. Now, I don't have my browser open to the id games archive because I came up with a different... Yeah. Let's see how this does. I probably should have... Uh, I probably should have tried this out in a live streaming context. I thought about doing it last night, but I was just... Too tired and whatever. This is something that I whipped up over the weekend. It is a uh, a browser for, or just basically a Wad Wednesday launcher uh, for id games stuff. For basically doing all of the stuff that I normally do from the command line and from the web browser on Wad Wednesdays. So yeah, uh, I built it using PlaySkey, which is my ASCII art animation and and game creation, and in this case, application development thing. Um, and yeah, this is, uh, it's just a full on little application and stuff. It's not doing a whole lot of cool stuff at the moment. I should probably put it in a little title screen too, but, um, but yeah, it's got some, it's got some tricks up its sleeve and, uh, it allows us to do some of that stuff that I would, some of the stuff that I would do before, you know, earlier in a more clunky way, in a little bit more of a streamlined way. And it also has kind of like that retro look to it, uh, cause PlaySki does that really easily. Okay, so yeah, uh, it uh, yeah. Until I add a, a title screen, it's just going to launch directly into uh, a random file here, and that's fine. Um, but before we do, let's yeah. Actually, this this feels a little yeah. I, I need a title screen if only so that I can bring up the plushy pain elemental and rub its head for good luck, and then hit the go first random button. But here it is. We're looking at the first random pick that it came up with. This is. I should also note that this is accessing a local mirror that I've made of the id games archive. Um, it is possible to do one of those. It's only about 20 gigs of data. Um, only do it if you're interested in like preservation and stuff. Like obviously, we don't want to hammer their servers or anything. But yeah, working on local files is pretty is pretty nifty. Okay, so yeah, this first thing that we got it shows us like the path name of the level here, and I hope this is visible on stream. Um, I'll have to see how that see how it comes out at the at the stream's resolution. It's a deathmatch level, so we're gonna move right on. I could I guess I could actually have it avoid picking stuff in the doomed in the deathmatch folder, but whatever. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, huh. It's supposed to. It usually makes a little sound there. I wonder if. I wonder if. Uh, oh yeah, what's going on here? Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. So this is another deathmatch level called. Bully Boy from 1995 by the author Bully Boy. I've never heard of that name. I don't. I'm not sure that that person stuck around in the Doom community. Uh, okay, so now we've got okay K Brick Two by Kurt Kessler from 1998. It was released on 420 1998. Uh, I think that was. I think this was before 420 became a meme. Or I don't know. Who knows? I'm certainly not a historian in that regard. 
Uh, what all does this person have to say about this? Yeah, so I can I can browse from this interface. I can hit a random thing. I can see all of the files inside of this zip. I can see the number, all the different levels that are inside this zip, and then I can scroll through the README. I can page through it and whatever. Just see whatever info I need to. And yeah, there's not a whole lot in the README about this. Okay, I think I got what I wanted in the first kbrick.wad. Skill 1 is real easy, health and ammo. The rest are hard, a noticeable change from 1 to 3 to 4. This wad should run nice on slower computers, which is good to know, because... Yeah. Okay, so... New sounds. No, but I am starting a WAV file collection. I think with the right sounds in the right places, it could work. Uh, all right. Well, cool. Let's jump in. This is uh, this is Doom Two Map One, and yeah, we get our own little like it brings up a little. If, if I wanted to edit the command line that it uses to launch DZ Doom, I can. Oh no! What happened? Uh? Huh? Why is it not? Huh? <laughs> okay. This was not a problem that I saw in, uh... Yeah, yeah, no, okay. Weird. Um... I guess I can tell it specifically use the Doom 2 iWOD. See if that, see if that works. Okay. Okay, um, now the Kako friend comes up after we've already launched in play, after we've already hit play once. Um, oh yeah, what was this, what was this thing called? I've already forgotten. K-Brick. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, so here we are in K-Brick. Um, we've got a new sky here. It actually looks a lot like the star fields from, uh, from some of the master levels. And yeah, we've got some new textures here, yeah. I mean, this was 1998, so people were definitely starting to include their own, uh, yeah, it's possible that it is a Stanley Kubrick reference. Okay. Whole bunch of hit scanners over there. I like this big open area. This is a kind of a unique way to start things off. So how do I get up? Yeah, it does have kind of a does have kind of a TNT-ish look to it. I don't think I saw the author making mention of any source ports in their README, but... Hmm. Yeah, how do I, how do I get up from this bottom-most level? Sort of a weird little wrinkle in the geometry here. Oh, look at that. It uh, looks like it's actually a very narrow gap, and I have no idea why that could be, but... Okay, so... This looks like our way into this whole big structure here. All right, there's a red key, some armor, just all kinds of goodies. Thus far, this map has uh, has definitely kind of dumped out resources on the player. Like, it gave me, like, multiple boxes of shells right in that first outdoor area. So, yeah. Okay, so we need a yellow key to do that. Hmm. Alright, that doesn't actually look like the way in. So now I have a chain gun that I can kind of use to snipe... To snipe these guys. Oh, okay. Alright. So that's just a very... Yeah, the stairwell... The entrance to this to this thing... Yeah, the stairs were just kind of tucked away there. Okay. Got the rocket launcher, and yeah, cool. Now we have a larger view of a better view of that spot beyond, you know, of the of the the opposite thing. Um, all right, cool. So I assume at some point we'll bump into maybe the yellow key. Okay. All right, so this is just pathways and stuff up, and yeah, it's just gonna take us straight up to this other feature. 
Yeah, some good, uh, some speculation as to whether, yeah, like, did how much of an impact on, in the chat, how much of an impact on the quality of levels people were making did the release of Doom Builder in 2003, according to Doom Wiki? How much of an impact did that have? Um, I'm trying to remember what the first release of Doom Builder was like, because um, someone else who was, you know, I, I definitely wasn't mapping or anything around that time. Somebody else would have to tell me uh, what kind, uh, how much of a of a leap forward compared to other level editors to 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 extant level editors at the time it was. Because um, as I recall, like, I forget how good Doom Builder's uh, 3D preview was. You know, because uh, I remember in the, in the top-down view, you know, it was, it, was, it was definitely an improvement, but, it, you know, it wasn't like a huge paradigm shift above running into, getting down into some dungeon-y bits and running into some tougher enemies here. Um... Yeah, yeah. Um, cause yeah, I think like, you know, that was probably around the first point where, you know, having like a, a really good fluid 3D preview would have become possible and easy on, uh, you know, in Windows, say. Um, but I'm, I'm sure that a lot of Doom, Doom Builder brought a lot of other in enhancements. Um, I just want to note this here. I really like the way that this is using, um, I mean, that's just a normal yellow skull key pickup, but it's being positioned so that it's like, it feels like it's actually more of a part of this texture. I think that's cool. Okay, so that's our yellow skull key. And we now, where we know where to go, where to take that back to. Yeah, and yeah, Revenant rising out of the ground. Yeah, like the, the, the architecture in this is pretty cool and impressive. Um, but also the uh, the combat setups have some have some have some inventiveness to it. Um, yeah, and just the fact that like this is a return trip, so we've got you know now that we've been through this area here. And gosh, actually, yeah, there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of monsters here. Cool. Yeah, I'm digging this. This is good. Got a rocket two for one with that caco there. All right, so that's the blue key door. Who is shooting? Man, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of. Bunch of buttheads over there. Okay, so yeah, our our little trip to get the 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 red the yellow skull key really really opened up a lot of little monster closets or compartments. You know, I, I think um, it feels less like I don't know when people use monster closet in like a pejorative way. I think a lot of times they mean like you're in a corridor. Something that feels like something that would have a closet, and a room that feels very much like a closet, um, pops open, and then you're like, "Oh, there's a monster in there." Whereas when it's a big open area, and just some walls come down, and the area opens up a bit more, and there's more, there's new baddies. Um, I think that's you know, I think that, I think that stays free of the the pejorative sense of monster closet. All right, I'm gonna turn off this music here. Just because we've all heard it. Okay, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of different, like, door bars and stuff, and I'm curious as to what's going to open here. All right, both of them opened up. We've got the red skull key. I'm digging this lighting here. Like, we've got, like, this torch, like, casting, casting shadows here. Giving us a clearer sense of... It's really doing a lot for... I mean, this geometry is super basic, but, you know, it's making it... More, uh, more interesting just by just by giving the room more of a shape. I 
I think in um, Doom is actually not. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that Doom is at all alone in that uh, among 90s FPS games in the way that you would, you know, you would often take relatively basic architecture and make it more interesting or just sort of elucidate it a little better by using lighting. Because, I mean, in, in Quake, for sure, like a lot of time, like in Quake, if you made a box room... Even that box room with a light in the middle of it isn't going to be that interesting. But if you put a, a few pillars in a box room, uh, and then you put a single light source in that room in Quake, it'll cast all those nice... The light mapping will cast all those nice shadows and stuff. Um, and you kind of instantly have a room that, you know... I think, like, gameplay uh, interests is sort of a, it's a different matter, but I think, you know, you've almost automatically got something that's that's visually at least a little interesting to look at. Um, with Doom, of course, you have to do a little bit more work, uh, where you have to, like, chop up the sectors and change their light levels and all that, but um, when people do that, uh, as they were, as, as was, as they were doing in the, uh, in this hallway here, I think the results uh, pretty clearly speak for themselves. All right, so this is actually a pretty cool area. While I've been gabbing about about lighting and architecture, um, this is this is pretty cool, honestly. Like, I like how they've created an upper, you know, without using any floors upon floors tricks, which only barely would have been available uh, in '98. Um, you know, just just alternating like floor and ceiling heights here. They've created a sense of like an interior and an exterior space here, um, and I think that's really cool. And, yeah, like, putting Hell Knights, you know, Hell Knights and one Baron, uh, I think, you know, really creates, like, a... This is, an, this is kind of an interesting use of them. Um, they're kind of being used as, uh, as turrets here, as, as snipers, sort of. Um, and, yeah, and they're up there, and at this point, now that I've gotten the blue key that I was after, I don't really feel like I need to fight them, but... You know, I think they were creating something interesting. Okay, so... Yeah, at this point, I've kind of got, like... Yeah, I've sort of got everything I came here for. Oh, okay, and... As we have now been primed to expect... Uh, it looks like our trip into that space opened up some more stuff. Nice, very nice. Cool. And yeah, I believe the, uh... I believe, uh... the author that the variation in, in difficulty levels is meaningful here. I'm getting a, a decent challenge with, uh, with Hurt Me Plenty, but I could definitely imagine a version of this with even slightly ramped up uh, ultra violence non monster placements that would be that would be also cool okay okay it looks like there's some new hell knights up there and yeah just a whole bunch more hell knights this map really loves the hell knights okay and yeah they've kept us pretty hungry for health I haven't been very hungry at all for ammo, but health is another matter. Okay, yeah. All right, let's hop down here. The author is using um, these, every little thing that, like this is, I can't move over this onto the stairwell, which um, might have been the right call. It, it, you know, and in general, the author seems to, to like blocking you off from, like I can't jump over, over this little railing right here. Um, in this case, it's a little bit cramped, but, you know, I think it's fine. Alright, let's tackle this big thing. And we might actually be getting close to the end of this map. I don't know, but... I'm kind of hoping that they... That they send us off with a good, with a good, tough fight. But, yeah. Alright, well, we've got... 
got two knights and a baron, so... And yeah, we've got those those jerks over there, actually, like, just kind of throwing some some randomness in, into the mix. You guys. Yeah, and I'm, I'm kind of guessing, I'm pretty low on health here, but I'm kind of guessing that that is the last real opposition of the level, because the exit switch is right there. So unless they've got... Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, you know, I think, I don't know, I, I, I definitely would have left these unblocked. Because letting the player, if the player does want to get down there, I think that's, you know... I mean, it's also, I think there's also, you know, Doom... I think fulfilling play base player expectations uh, means something a little different with something as lo-fi as Doom, but I think for the most part, it's like I would expect to be able to run over that, you know? Like, give me a good reason that I can't just hop over that. Um, but yeah. Okay, well, I'm kind of guessing that this is the end. Did I kill all the monsters? Not quite all the monsters, but yeah. Um, yeah, and actually, let me reload that and just have a look at the layout since we're done with it. Um, yeah, this was cool. I dug this. Like, cool architecture. Um, it didn't go overboard in the detailing, but the geo that was there was, you know, strong and effective. Uh, good use of lighting in the interior areas. Like, yeah, looking, looking back, it kind of looks like it was mostly interior areas where the lighting fanciness showed up. But, um, yeah, this was cool. This was cool. I dug it. And yeah, I, 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 I kind of wish there might have been a little bit more enemy uh, variation. Like, the Hell Knights were... There, there, there's just so many of them. But honestly, I mean, you know, the Hell Knight is definitely a versatile and it, it slots into a very useful archetype thing where it's like something you can't just knock down immediately with the super shotgun so I can definitely see why the author used used Hell Knight so much here so yeah that's cool and yeah this is a nice little vista to uh, to, to, to bid this map farewell on you know with all of the different different cool like roots and levels of geometry and the, the big starting area um, so cool yeah nicely done okay so that was K Brick 2 by Kurt Kessler from 1998. And yeah, yeah, I guess the one thing that we don't get, and I don't actually, I don't actually know how I would get the uh, reviews, the user, the old user reviews off of an id games page with this thing. I would have to do like some HTML scraping, which I was fastidiously trying to stay away from when I was writing this, this little launcher, but yeah. And yeah, these little caco buddies that have joined us. Um, they have, uh, they, they appear each time you hit play, it spawns one so that when you come back, it's waiting for you. And then they, more of them build up over time. Of course, we had these two failed launches, uh, that, that I'm going to need to troubleshoot and figure out what the deal was with that. But, uh, yeah. Okay. R new random file. Okay. This looks like another deathmatch map. Fraz V 9.3. That's a lot of revisions. All right, yeah, this looks like a deathmatch map pack from 2002. Jabruski at AOL.com. Okay. Moving right along. Ingvi. Is this Ingvi? That's not how you spell Ingvi Malmstein, is it? Ingvi Series Level V2, Level 1 V2.0 by Jester, Jesper Anderson. And it looks like this is from 1996, so pretty early on. Uh, in the history of the Doom community before the source release. Um, my first release, Doom 2 WAD, that I think holds the sta hold the standards. I've done WADs for Doom 2 before, so I'm not a beginner. I would appreciate some feedback, because if you liked it, it'll result in more. Description, tricky but fun. Lots of wood and stone textures. Yeah, I, I thought that wasn't quite the way that you spelled Ingui Malmstein, but... Um, yeah, okay. All right, so this is single player... Um, oh yeah, and actually, I think I might have uh, I might have missed. Okay, was there anything different in? Yeah, I can browse different text files within the uh, the levels here. Okay, no, it doesn't look like it's any different. Okay, well, cool. This is Doom Two Map One again. So let's just go ahead and launch that and play Ingvi Map Level One. Ingvi. Okay. Here we are. All right, here we are. A um, whole lot of baddies in there. I 
And yeah, we're in like a really tight hallway kind of situation. Hmm. All right, let me just make sure that there's not a custom sky here. Oh, that's right. We're not using uh, we're not using wad smoosh. Okay. All right. So yeah, we're inside of a place of some sort. Very helpful description here. Um, and yeah, there's some sort of weird circle on the floor. Possibly a demonic summoning circle kind of thing. Got a little lift up. Whole lot of baddie, whole lot of imps, but okay, and that's our super shotgun. Oh my goodness, wow. Uh, yeah, the Kaku Demon just meleeed me. Alright. Okay, so that's kind of rough right up front here. Like, ooh, yellow key to open this door. Okay, help me remember that like there's a spot back near the beginning that I can open. It's sort of a secret door, but it's yellow key locked. So that's interesting. All right, so. Alright, so we have a little more of an idea of what to expect here. Oh, okay. I thought that that I thought that, that Kako spawned in specifically when I uh, I grabbed the super shotgun, but apparently not. That was just that was just luck. Um. Oh yeah, good question. Let me. Uh, nope. Okay, so I heard a pain elemental come alive. Oh yeah, it's back there. All right, so at some point, that's interesting. There's like a there's a whole little room back there that's visible only through a tiny little square window with the blue key sitting in it. Interesting. Oh, whole lot of whoa. That's a nice little... Yeah, I mean, this is a classic monster closet right here, but it was used in sort of a, a very specific, like, you know... That was a very specific outcome that the designer had in mind there. Okay, blue key to open that door. Interesting, okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so like, what am I doing here? Oh, maybe I can actually go in here? Yes. This is a difficult texture alignment situation. Anytime, something that I've noticed in some of the mapping I've done lately, um, anytime you've got uh, a texture that has its own built-in uh, wall to floor or ceiling trim, when you align it, you know, you've got to either like let it just let it repeat or you've got to like do this kind of stuff or do something different, do something a little more tricksy. Um, that's a tough, that's a tough situation. I do like that stucco texture. I think it's, there's a few textures in Doom 2.wad that are called stucco something. And I think this is one of the stucco ones. This one has always stuck out to me as having sort of a, a southwest, a southwest U.S. feel. Whoa. This is it's an interesting, weird secret. Oh my goodness. We are now in wacky skin wall teleporter room. Huh. Okay, so I'm kind of assuming that these will take us all to different places. Yep. Alright, I need to be systematic about this. Okay, so that's the weird, like... Scabby one. Oh, I don't even know. If I just keep moving straight, will I, uh... I don't think I've seen a repeat yet. That might have been the repeat there. Yeah, okay. Um... Okay, 
Okay, that's leading me back. Yeah, this is not... This is... Oh, maybe, maybe I can get out of here if I just do that? Yes, okay. Alright, that's fine. Anybody else in here? Got the backpack out of that. So yeah, that's a weird setup. Okay, so that's what was in there. Although I stepped off that path to go on a uh, to get a to do a secret. Or was that even a secret? I forget. Hmm. I don't know if I'm making a mistake by leaving these uh leaving these barrels unexploded. I think that was fine actually. Hmm, okay. Alright, so this should put me within spitting... Yeah, okay, there we go. There's the blue key. Cool. Alright, that's an odd little... Uh... <laughs> nice! Nice. I don't know if that was specifically designed as a gimme, but I sure did just shoot that barrel and everybody died, so that's, that's cool. Okay, all right, so now we've got the blue key, and yeah, that's right, there was a door up here that we can now access with that. Ooh, this is, this is interesting. Right, so we got some weird floating platformy kind of things. Up. Oh. Hmm, interesting. And yeah, we've got to kind of pick our way along here. Weird. Yep. Oh, now we're outside. Old chainsaw tucked away behind that tree there. Okay, and maybe this is the way back out of this outdoor area. Self jib. Good job, dude. Yet again. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, so I go back in here. I go back through the blue key door. Now, okay, there's a switch over there. What's going on? Oh, weird. Huh. I wonder if that was a bug that I just triggered. Oh, and I can't get back there that way. Okay. Well, whatever. I get the idea. Oh, man, actually, I should just pop this and just go through here. Owie. Jibbed. Oh, okay, and that's what led here. Okay, so that's how that caco got in there. Hmm, all right, so... We now have a clear idea of where all that takes us, so let's hop back on the path here. Oh, geez. Hmm, okay, so there's a bit of a damage penalty to falling off there, I see. Oh, okay, so this might have been... Yeah, okay, so that was the yellow... That, that wasn't actually, like, a big secret or anything. That was just... Let's just stay way back in. Okay. So let's see if I can run along that. There we go. And now that opens up a switch that we can use. Cool. And... Oh, jeez. Ow. Alright, this is heating up. Cool. Yeah, that was a tough little ambush type thing. Oh, 
Okay, well, I guess that was the level. And how far back did I save? I think it was probably a while since I had saved. All right, but yeah, I mean, I think we, I think we saw the, 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 the gist of that. Um, cool, yeah, we've got the, the map's name inscribed in line deaths outside the map here. Um, yeah, that teleporter room was just kind of random. Um, I don't know what that was like. I, I, at first, I thought that would be like a master teleporter control sort of thing, like map 19 the Citadel has, but um, didn't really seem to be. So, yeah, like pretty tight and and uh, cramped in some places, I would say. But, um, yeah, not, not bad. Um, not bad combat encounters and stuff. Like, I don't know, there wasn't anything about this level that blew me away or anything, but, you know, there were a few, there were a couple surprises. Okay, so that was Ingva, Ingva level 1 v2.0. Yeah, this probably would have been, yeah, this was for, for January of 96. This, yeah, this, this would have been, this would have been competitive, I would say. Okay, um, oh, gosh, yeah, excuse me, just been tired lately. Um, yeah, that ending encounter was cool. That had a punch to it, uh, that, I don't know, would have been cool to see. I don't know, maybe there's more levels in this series or something. Yeah. All right, let's hit random again. Uh, another deathmatch level, gambler.wad. So you're still looking for wads after two years of Doom 2, eh? You know, I am. It's true. It is It is more than two years after Doom 2, and I am still looking for wads uh, by Dragon with two Gs, but it's, it's a deathmatch pack, so I'm not going to... Not going to give it too close a look, but looks like we got some custom sounds in there. Interesting. New music. Yes, original piece composed with my Roll-On Sound Canvas using cut-and-paste instrument patches. Sounds great if you have a general MIDI card. Huh. All right. Well, I'm actually a little bit curious about that, but uh, I don't know. Don't want to just boot it up and listen to music. Okay. Shun all by TDR uh, from night from December of 1995 so made only about a month before released only about a month before our last one created on a 46 DX266 VL bus accelerator I, I love when people would boast about their sick gaming rigs uh, in these old in these old wad files um, I wonder if that 46 DX266 is, a, is still out there running somewhere Probably not. It's probably in a sad e-waste landfill. Anyway, this is Shun All by TDR. Uh, let's see, there's a little, looks like there's a little story paragraph thingy down there. Uh, at night, you jumped over the courtyard wall and got in under the cover of darkness. You will wait for dawn to make your attack. This is a straightforward seek and destroy mission. Your first attack will be on the courtyard. Remember, only fools rush in. Take out the Gatling guns first, and then all the others. If you persevere to the end, you will find yourself at the footstep of a torchlit stairway. What lies beyond is your destiny. All right, so that's a nice little that's a nice little uh, setup. Uh, yeah, cool. Okay, so it doesn't specify. It's weird. Like this doesn't. My little Waddles replacement here does not show any levels in here. But let's give it a shot anyway. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, I guess it just needs to be told specifically what kind of what kind of I what. Yeah, it's Doom Two Map One. All right. Well, I hope that this boots up and is valid. Yeah. Okay. Um, shun all. Cool. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for the. All right. Um. Yep. It's still D running. Okay, so we're in we're inside here, but there's a whole lot of hit scanner baddies out there. Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's that, that that's that would have been what this author is saying about take out the, the chain gunners, the Gatling gunners. I don't know if there's like some some specific definitional difference between a chain gun and a Gatling gun. Gatling gun sounds like one of those 19th century patent kind of situations, but um, let's go back and collect the chain chainsaw here just in case. All right, doesn't look like that's much of anything. Okay, 
so yeah, let's get stuck into this outside area here. Um, there's probably like one other chain gunner here. Actually, a lot of shotgunners. And yeah, it looks like infighting might have taken out the other chain gunner. Okay, so now I think we're all down to imps. So, so long as we're quick on our feet, we can probably take them all out. Let's get up on this high ground here. And because I'm being kind of constrained to this walkway here, that now actually makes it a little easier for these imps to, to hit me. So that's always an interesting trade-off, you know, when you have some high ground that gives you a better shot. Uh, but you have to, ch but it makes you, it constrains your pathing a little, a little more, makes you a bit more of a target, makes you a bit of an easier target rather. Um. <clears throat> all right, so we're doing pretty good for ammo and stuff here. Guess I'm just scooping up all the little goodies. Okay, so yeah, what was that all about? Like I. Oh, this opened up? Oh ho. Definitely wishing for the super shotgun. Oh, more stuff's opening up. Okay. That's what that chainsaw's for. Cool, and I'll bet something else is going to open up when I Yep, okay. So yeah, this is cool. I this is a this is an old level design pattern that uh, I've always found kind of fascinating. Um, the move down different passages within a relatively constrained space and each little new corner you poke your nose into opens up something else. Uh, I want to say TNT map 5 maybe uh, also does this and I, I that actually struck me back in the day like it's not like an amazing implementation of that idea or anything but it's it's kind of cool. It's a little unexpected. So yeah. whole bunch of weak little troopers in here. Heck of shotgunners. ridiculous numbers of them. This feels like a Wolfenstein level. Kind of. Alright, so that's... Ow. Alright, now is a good time for me to run back and get that Megasphere. Cool. Just continuing to scoop up all this stuff. Okay, well... Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's a Wolfenstein level. It's not a specific one, to my knowledge. It's just, you know, anytime you have the same ceiling height and 90 degree turns on kind of a grid. Yeah. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, that's right. Tenements. Uh, yeah, towards the end of Tenements, uh, map 17... Uh, of Doom Two, that's true. It uses that. Okay, so what what did I what did I do here? Like, what was is anything new opened up to me here? Oh yes, yes it is. All right.
If I had the super shotgun, I would definitely have just chopped through those specters because I have so much ammo, but yeah. Okay, so yeah, this has opened up yet further, and now there's like a stairwell. Oh ho! Just in time, we get the super shotgun. Right as a Baron hops out of the wall at us. This is one case where, I mean, this is a really uh, simple use of, you know, barons because they are, you know, people refer to, to barons as a door with legs. Um, when one pops out here, like, I kind of feel like, you know, I, d I have no idea what the level designer's intent was, but it had the effect of, like, forcing me back down to a safe distance, which put them up above me, which, you know, isn't, like, a massive, like, having the high ground in Doom isn't, like, an explicit advantage. It's just, like, one of those... It just introduces this extra cognitive factor that changes how you aim and move and how you're perceiving the fight. Um, and that's one thing that I think you can definitely use barons for, or, or any high hit point enemy, honestly. Um, is that, yeah, like, they can they can push you away if they're in... if they're able to, to block a passageway sufficiently for you. Alright, so we've got passages leading in multiple directions here. time we've seen the, the sky in a while. Cool, alright. I shouldn't actually have grabbed that, uh, I shouldn't have gorfed that, that armor, but whatever. What can you do? Alright, so, yeah. The, uh, the sort of, like, you know, the color and texture variation of this map has not been that great so far. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, like, a super ugly map or anything, but, yeah, like, it's... But you know, this was this was December of '95, so. All right, we got a scary giant furnace doorway there. All right, this is this is a little more interesting geo-wise. And yeah, that's a that's a tough area to uh, to get stuck into there. I have no idea where this long, twisting hallway is leading, but... What did that do? Interesting. We've got to hike all the way out of, out of this long, zigzaggy hallway. Okay, yeah, so it opened up that door. And yeah, I'm gonna go there because I still don't like the idea of jumping into that owl. Into that room full of revenants. This level designer definitely enjoys like repeating a setup multiple times. Um, I kind of wish there was a little bit more like development, you know? Like I think it's fine to repeat something. But I think repeating it with a little bit of a twist instead of just something that's exactly the same setup. Um, frequently better to do. Okay. Alright, tons of... I'm actually starting to, to wear through my shotgun ammo. And yeah, there's just... Okay. <clears throat> so. 
so yeah all right so each of these have been digressions from what feels like the critical path which is the big room with the revenants in it i don't necessarily know what that did for me other than just give me some goodies yeah All right, am I just meant to like just run in there? And yeah, there's a whole bunch of. Let me let me let me exhaust my other options here. Let's see what's over here. Oh my goodness, tons of doors, so many doors. Okay, so yeah, we, now we've got a variation on the stick your nose into something, open up a new thing kind of thing. Yep. So yeah, this does make me curious if um, this author was specifically digging on this idea used in tenements. Or if it was just independently arrived at. Or drew from a different inspiration. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's it's weird to think, but um, Final Doom was not out yet at the time that this map was released, nor when the previous was released, I think. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure. I think Final Doom came out in, like, March or May of 96 or something. So it was very late in Doom's lifespan. I mean, it was the last Doom release, you know, period. Okay, so we sure have chopped through a whole bunch of weak hit scanners. And now we're full up on shotgun ammo again. Yeah, the author seems to like these long, like, digressive hallways that take you away from the main thing, and then you walk back along them, and there's not really anything new about them. But now you've accomplished something. Something. Yeah, what did this do? I have no idea. Um, oh my goodness, okay. Okay, well that's another doorway into there. And actually these revenants are way easier to deal with from up here. So that is what I will do. Ow. Easier but not trivial to deal with. Golly, okay. So yeah, this is a room full of full of mess. There's just a whole bunch of nonsense in here. Um oh and some of those some of those specters are warping into the central platform. Okay, so Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, Doom 64 came out in 97. It's true, it wasn't on PC, but it is definitely a canonical official part of Doom. The Doom Saga. <clears throat> uh, okay, so I actually don't want to go back down here, although it is nice to refill the shotgun ammo. Yeah, I mean, I think Quake came out in June of, uh, of 96. I think I picked it up from a Best Buy in uh, August of 96. Um... Okay, so, yeah, we've definitely got a real sense of the lay of the land here. Um, and, yeah, it does seem like I am meant to go through that. Just right through the middle here. Alright, I am just going to take a minute here and take care of all of these imps who are just, you know, just randomly sniping at me. Because I want to just be able to chill in this area, and they are not letting me do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Doom 64 does have some cool... It has some cool visuals. Um, it's never super grabbed me, and I haven't played all the way through it, I don't think. But um, but it's good, yeah. 
pretty worthy, uh, some pretty worthy level design and stuff by the, what was it, Midway team? I don't know why. I guess I'm just, I don't know. I guess I'm just killing these guys just to, just to clear this room out. Okay. And now I want to jump down and grab this stuff, even though it's going to damage me. I don't know. I don't always make the right choices. Okay, so I came from here. So my options for new places to go are either here. Can't open that. Can't open that, so interesting. What do I do then? What is the way forward? Hmm... Hmm. Is this the only way I can go? Okay, so yeah, that just teleports me back up there. Does this let me... Okay, so I can go those two ways. Interesting. What What could they be trying to... to path me to here? I'll snap up that soul sphere for sure. Hmm. Hmm. Huh. I am stumped. So actually, I kind of want to go back... Yeah, this, this, this map has set sort of an annoying precedent in that... Yep, okay. So yeah, the, the fact that new... The fact that new closets here with new enemies have opened up definitely makes me think that that I'm meant to backtrack here. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, Doom 64 did make good use of fog. Um, okay, so... There was that weird little black glass cubby hole kind of thing that I've been curious about. Yeah. Yeah, see, like that just really feels like an exit or something. But I don't know. I don't know. Kind of thought that maybe that had opened up with something, but yeah. Whoa. Hmm, okay. So these little cubbies opened up. What is in here? Nothing? I mean, there's this outdoor area, which I'm pretty sure nothing has changed about, but who knows. It would be kind of cool if this level, like, ended back out here. You know, it drew you back out into here and, like, a cyber demon or something had spawned in. Maybe a cyber demon and an arch file resurrecting all these jerks that you killed early on. Who knows? I don't know where this is going. Okay, so... Yeah, it looked like a little bit of double back stuff. I was really thinking that, that the way forward was doubling back here, but... It does not appear to be the case. Um, and yeah, like, I think I went down to the end of all of these little hallways. Maybe something has opened up here now? No. No. Hmm. I am stumped. Stumped. And yeah, no secrets in this map, so I haven't been particularly inquisitive in that regard, but... All right, yeah, and that's just the long, boring little... <laughs> this is probably the strangest, most interesting feature of this map. Like, just this random, like, little, you know, 
giant fireplace furnace opening thing. All right, I, against my better judgment, I'm going to go down. It just doesn't seem like there's any other. Yeah, yeah, see, there's nothing, there's just nothing. You know, the other, um, I'll, I'll jump to the auto map uh, when I get back out here. Um, another thing is that, um, you know, this, all of this stuff kind of feels like it's conforming to the same rectangular footprint, like all of this stuff here. So when, so it, it makes me feel like this doesn't, you know, that this really was a hard line and that it doesn't actually, you know, that there's, that there, that there, it, it's very unlikely that anything else would be out here. Oh, also like just the auto map, just the panning just stops right there. So that is indeed like an absolute, yeah, okay. So that is a that is the absolute southwest corner of the map. Yeah, geez, I never I don't think I had ever quite realized that you can sort of cheat in a certain sense here. Where like, yeah, like that is the northeastern extent of the map. So you can kinda the most space this map will ever have is contained within that footprint. That's interesting. Um well damn, I am now really stumped as to where to go. I just really don't know. Um, like there's the big four-part slime hall area. There's, uh, yeah, I've, I've already doubled back a fair amount through all of this. I don't know, I've, I don't feel like I've been given a clear sign as to where to, uh, as to where to go to. So I'm just kind of, just kind of bonking my head into stuff now. All right, so there's these upside down cross thingies. I don't think that these are big enough for me to jump. I don't think I can make that jump into there. And besides that, it just looks like, oh, these are right side up crosses, which are less common in Doom. Yeah, so like, how do I get this thing open? Like, it really feels like, yeah, I just don't, Um, I mean, I guess I could jump down and, like, try to just scoop up all these little goodies here, but... <sighs> yeah. It just doesn't do anything. What am I missing? What am I missing? Um, I don't know. Yeah, any 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 suggestions here? Oh, uh, there's one place that maybe I didn't backtrack all the way to. All right, let's go all the way back here. Cuz it was spawning, yeah, like those those little closets popped open with the hell knights, but I don't think I checked out the No, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So <laughs> that is quite a little mystery there. All right. So what's what's going on here? Oh, that's a weird like just step through that little window frame kind of texture there. All right. So interesting. Yeah, my feeling with, with, with that kind of progression, like... I think there's potentially something very neat about making players figure out that a place that they saw much earlier was significant and that they should go back to it. I just think, like, it's a, it's a tightrope you walk there because, you know, you're kind of... you're expecting it to click with them. I don't know, you know, you got, like, you got to create a little space where that real is, I mean, it's, 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 it's honestly like adventure game puzzle design, where you want to create an, an, the right conditions for players to put it together for themselves without just giving them, like, a, com a, a primrose path that anybody could walk down with, with very little effort, you know, um, yeah, you know, I mean, one one thing you could always do is like, you know, if you, 
you know, showing people, like, say later in the level, the player can do something that opens up something that they can, something much earlier in the level. Um, one thing that you can do is just show them something that reminds them of that. Like, if there's something architecturally unique about the thing that you want them to backtrack to, show them something that, like, is visually unique to that earlier thing later. And so, and kind of create this weird little rhyme to it, you know. Um, I would have to, like, you know, doodle it up in a map editor for, you know, which which could take me, like, five, ten minutes or something, but um, that that's kind of the idea that I had, you know. Because, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think, you know, it's the kind of thing that if you commit to it and you put energy into it, you could make it, you could make it cool. It's just that in a lot of maps, they just kind of want to, you know, either the designer gets it and assume, and therefore assumes other people will, which is a classic pitfall when you're designing something. Um, or they just don't, you know, they think it's clear enough, and the, or they're, they're just trying to extend out gameplay as long as possible, you know, which is also something that people do and did and, and all that. Um, but yeah. Okay. I am enjoying the change of pace here with this library. Like, this is a, a change in the texture. You know, like, this feels like it's just a fundamentally kind of different place. Um, yeah. So, okay, so now I have not gotten any keys, but I feel like I did reach sort of an end progression point there. Maybe not, though. Wait, did I hit a switch? Yeah, I hit a switch. So I'll bet that opened up something else. And let's see, was this maybe something over here? No, yeah, I already, I already hit that. Yeah, I think it's it's true that like yeah, when you're when you're like you the designer are probably not going to be able to correctly anticipate what people won't get 100% of the time, you know. I think that's that's one of the main reasons that you put you put your stuff in front of other people uh, is because yeah, you know, just you always want to throw it at a brain with a different set of information than yours. Um, okay, so that opened that up. And then there was a switch here. So what could that have opened up? This is definitely some this is definitely some switch hunt gameplay, which I am not normally a fan of. And it is definitely starting to wear on me a bit. Hello. Okay. That's a little, uh, that's a pain elemental fighting technique there is just get the pain elemental between you, between you and all the other enemies in the space. Okay, so... Those two things opened up with those, and now th this door is open at long last. Um, yeah, I also don't like just... I'm not a fan of design language that's like, okay, two doors that look identical, one of them you can use to open, and the other one pops open later when you hit a switch or something. I don't know. Just, you know, you could put bars over the doors or... Who knows, you know? Just something. Oh, it's, it's two arch vials. Would you look at that? Oh, jeez. Jeez, yeah, and the rate of fire on these is, uh... When you have two arch vials together, they can really... They can really keep you out of an area. All right, so what was the point of this? Just getting... Oh, it was to open that door, I see. Okay, that opened up... Okay, so this is... This whole, like... That that tenements... I, I don't know what, to, what 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 more to call it other than that, 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 than that end of tenements pattern, but um, it's definitely... 
it's definitely a very consistently repeated theme throughout the level. You know, there's a whole bunch of different incarnations of it. Okay, so wait, what did that... Okay, I hit that switch. I hit that switch. Um... Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, what did that do? Maybe I should just wander back out and see if it opened up something? Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right, I dig this area. Straggler. Okay, whoa. Some instant raise uh, lost souls in a little pit here. Cool, all right. Who wants to bet something bad will happen when I pick up that Megasphere? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> something opened. But is it bad? It's just a Mancubus. Personal Mancubus closet. Okay, that opened up something... Did that open up? Yes, it opened up this. All right, I think we're getting into the home stretch here. Something tells me. No keys in this level. Whoa, okay. That's that's a pretty cool visual. We've got a very tall staircase lined with torches. All right, and there is a cyber demon. Some barren buddies up there. All right, I can. This isn't. This was. This is very impressively presented, but um, it's definitely not like a super difficult fight or anything. Okay. Two megaspheres, jeez. Okay. So, yeah, let's scoop up more of these rockets here. And, yeah, this is actually, like... Having that super... Having to fight the cyber demon through that super narrow aperture... Oh, my goodness. Alright, well, first of all, let's see if we can get some infighting going on here. Get those barons just fighting that guy. Alright, yeah, so actually this this amount of barons is this is this is a tactically significant number of infighting cyber humans here, so that's good. And yeah, I'm just gonna Just gonna keep circling here, sorry if that's uh Okay, so I ran out of Cyber Demon before I ran out of Barons, which is fine. These Barons have already been at least a little bit softened up by the Cyber Demon. Okay. So now what? Ooh, something is lowering. And is this just a bunch of uh, Spectres? Sounds like there's a lot in there. I kind of wish, I kind of wish that those that these specters had like multiple ways into this space because they're all just going through this choke point here, 
And that's not... I'm just able to cut them down. Yeah, I can just sandwich this, basically. Jeez, there really are a ton of these. Hmm, okay. Well, that was certainly a fight. Um, yeah, I, I dug this setup in here, because, like, this, this, the amount of space that I had to maneuver was not so significant that I was able to just trivially just keep avoiding this. Like, those barons, like, keeping those barons huddled around the cyber demon there, like, that was cool. That was cool. And, yeah, in general, this, this map has been very generous with the ammo, so I've never felt too too tight on it. Alright, yeah, and so I basically cleared that one all the way out. Cool. Um, so let's see, that was Shun All by TDR. Um, yeah, that was reasonably, yeah, and that was from December of 1995, so that would have been a fairly epic map for 95, I feel like. You know, that was, that had a, that was, that had a lot, that had a long progression to it. Um, and I feel like it finished, aside from the weird, like, single-file specter room, I feel like it built up to a, to a nice conclusion, you know, like having that ominous-looking stairwell, and then the cyberdemon and the barons. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, yeah. What lies beyond is your destiny. All right, well, cool. Um, yeah, we played, let's see, what did we play today? We played Shunall. We played Ingvi. And we played K Brick too, so yeah, that's um yeah that was that was that was a good assortment of stuff, all pretty high quality, like nothing nothing just bad or you know super amateurish or anything. Uh, so yeah, that was fun, cool. Um, yeah, well I clearly have a few more kinks to work out with my little launcher here, but that seems to perform adequately. So yeah, and we've got little we've got little caco buddies. We've got a, we've got three more caco buddies than we should have because I I guess I tried to launch and it failed three more times, but yeah, we've got caco buddies, which is always good. So yeah, uh, I think I'm going to call it there. Thank you very much as always for watching. Um, and yeah, have a good week and I will see you I will see you next week.